In this screencast, we're going to look at the cranial nerves that contain autonomic fibres and how they're associated with the autonomic ganglia of the head. So first of all, let's draw out a list at the top of the various features we're going to identify. So the cranial nerves that are going to contain the autonomic fibres, the various autonomic ganglia within the head, how these postsynaptic fibres travel to their target organ within the trigeminal nerve, so which branch of the trigeminal nerve they travel to their target organ, and the target organ itself. So there are four cranial nerves which contain autonomic fibres. There are also four autonomic ganglia associated with the head. These are known as the ciliary ganglion, the pterygopalatine ganglion, the submandibular ganglion, and the otic ganglion. The target organs within the head that these autonomic fibres innovate are going to be the sphincter pupillae, that's in the eye, and that enables constriction of the pupil, the lacrimal gland, that enables tears to be produced, the lacrimal gland, and then we have the three salivary glands, the submandibular gland, the sublingual gland, and also the parotid gland. So let's go over the cranial nerves that contain autonomic fibres. There's the oculomotor nerve, so cranial nerve number three. There's the facial nerve, so cranial nerve number seven. There's the glossopharyngeal nerve, so cranial nerve number nine. And there's the vagus nerve, cranial nerve number ten. Now, first of all, let's just deal with the vagus nerve, because the vagus nerve doesn't really give rise to a great deal of autonomic fibres within the head. And these mostly send autonomic fibres down to the thoracic and the abdominal viscera within the trunk. So we don't really need to look at these in any much detail. If we then go to the oculomotor nerve, then the oculomotor nerve gives rise to presynaptic fibres that are going to pass towards the ciliary ganglion. From the ciliary ganglion, these fibres synapse with postsynaptic fibres, and they're going to pass to the sphincter pupillae of the eye. And like I said, they enable constriction of the pupil. And they're going to pass from the ciliary ganglion to the sphincter pupillae via a branch of the first division of the trigeminal, the ophthalmic division. So autonomic fibres from the oculomotor nerve Presynaptic fibres pass to the ciliary ganglion, and then from the ciliary ganglion, where they synapse, postsynaptic fibres piggyback alongside branches of V1, the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal, to innervate the sphincter pupillae of the eye. If we then turn to the facial nerve, then the facial nerve contains presynaptic fibres, and these synapse in the pterygopalatine ganglion. And it also gives rise to presynaptic fibres that synapse in the submandibular ganglion. From the pterygopalatine ganglion, we have postsynaptic fibres that pass towards the lacrimal gland. So here we can see postsynaptic fibres passing towards the lacrimal gland. And they do this within the second division of the trigeminal. So this is the maxillary division. So postsynaptic fibres leave the pterygopalatine ganglion and travel to the lacrimal gland via these maxillary fibres. Postsynaptic fibres from the submandibular ganglion, here they synapse, and they travel to the submandibular and the sublingual gland. Submandibular gland under your mandible, and the sublingual gland underneath your tongue. And these travel there via the third division of the trigeminal, which is the mandibular division. So postsynaptic fibres from the submandibular gland travel to the submandibular gland. Postsynaptic fibres from the submandibular ganglion 
travel to the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland via branches of these V3. Finally, if we look at the glossopharyngeal nerve, then presynaptic fibers running within the glossopharyngeal nerve go towards the otic ganglion. Postsynaptic fibers from the otic ganglion are then also going to pass to the parotid gland via the mandibular division. So here we can see fibers running to the parotid gland via the mandibular division. So we can see we've got two mandibular divisions here, taking fibers from the submandibular ganglion to the submandibular gland and sublingual gland, and also from the otic ganglion to the parotid gland. And these are all parasympathetic. So let's just quickly look at the sympathetic input, and the sympathetic input into these ganglia are going to come from the superior cervical ganglion. And within the superior cervical ganglion, which is the upper limit of the sympathetic chain, the postsynaptic fibers are going to leave and pass towards the common carotid artery. As the common carotid artery bifurcates into the internal and external arteries, it's going to receive these branches from the superior cervical ganglion. These are then going to run up through the arteries and innervate the various target organs of the head. So they're going to pass alongside the arteries that go to these target organs, delivering sympathetic innervation. So here we've got the superior cervical ganglion. Here we've got the internal and external carotid. We've got the common carotid here. And these postsynaptic fibers are going to run alongside the arter arterial supply to innervate these target organs. So this is just a brief summary of the autonomic innovation to the head.